we thought that there were really two aspects to education and energy. One was how can energy improve education in communities that don't currently have access or currently have a lower level of access to energy than we are lucky enough to have in most of the communities here in the UK and more developed countries. Also, the other aspect was what do people need to know in order to be able to make um, energy access projects work? Um, so um, who, what knowledge needs to be transferred? Who needs to know it? Um, all of these kind of issues. So I'll start first with how energy can improve education. So energy in schools, um, we mentioned that this can increase the, the quality <coughs> of teaching and therefore enable uh, better retention of, of teachers um, and stem the flow of people from rural to urban areas by creating a motivation for them to stay. Um, again, the same energy at home um, can offer the opportunity for people to do, for school children to do homework um, in the evenings. Um, it can offer the ability to use ICTs. Again, that equally applies to schools. Um, but this does have some negative impacts. Um, we, we noted particularly exposure to advertising and to um, a better quality of life that people may have been unaware of previously and perhaps in that case maybe ignorance could have been bliss because if you're seeing this um, improved quality of life that everyone else on the television or on the internet has, then maybe you become unsatisfied with the situation that you are in. Perhaps that could then become a driver for positive change, but if that positive change is too far away, then it could quite easily become a negative aspect. Um, we talked also about the need for uh, both policymakers and end users to be educated about the wider benefits of access to energy, um, how you could go about quantifying the societal benefits of energy access projects beyond just the immediate impacts in the particular community that project is going on in. Uh, the last thing in terms of the rural and urban flow was um, increasing access to energy and increasing education offers the potential for increasing um, entrepreneurship, um, creating energy livelihoods, uh, which is obviously the theme of this conference. So going on to the other aspect of education, what do people need to know in order to make energy access projects successful? Um, we talked about how the lack of understanding of technical equipment can make operation and maintenance difficult, um, how building capacity instead of simply installing bits of kit can make projects much more successful both for the individual project but also in terms of scalability. Um, and we mentioned a specific example of local manufacture, so John, John Simnett uh, works with a um, local manufacturer of small wind turbines, so instead of going and installing small wind turbines in particular communities, he instead adopts an approach whereby he transfers the knowledge with which to be able to manufacture these machines and to install them, um, or the knowledge with how to install them and to create a sustainable energy system that um, people living in or nearby to the communities without access to energy can go on and replicate and scale up um, themselves without the need for continued input from the global north. Uh, we also mentioned what can we learn from communities without access to energy. So the specific example of the M-Pesa was, was given. So this, um, we, were, we were talking about how it shouldn't be a one-way process. We shouldn't assume that we as people from the global north are people that need to <coughs> educate those from the global south, that there is also a lot that we can learn from the global south about how we can improve our ways of living and also um, that we are not necessarily going to think up all of the ideas are ourselves. Uh, I'm not really sure where I was going with that train of thought, but I'll continue <laughs> on to the next one. So I think the last point probably was uh, educating system designers about culturally appropriate solutions. So that links in with what can we learn from communities about access to energy. So what is, um, what is the most optimal, technically efficient system that system designers can come up with is not necessarily the most culturally appropriate solution. And that is where um, system designers really need to learn from the communities in which they're working with to establish what is the most useful system, what is the community currently doing, what are their current practices, and how can energy, access to energy, improve those practices? How can, how can they offer a new or an improved way of doing <coughs> things for that community? Um, so a more, a more efficient use of energy is what I've got written down here, not in terms of improving the technical efficiency, in terms of percentages of energy in, energy out, money in, energy out, this kind of things, but in terms of a more efficient way of living for the people who are, are benefiting from these energy access projects. 
So I think with that, I will wrap up and pass on to the next table.